Hello, welcome to the course on polymers. Uh, we are in the week 12 uh, where we are discussing uh, polymers in the environment. Uh, in this course, we have discussed the properties, the uses, uh, we discussed various concepts related to it and we had a significant emphasis on sustainability also. So, in this lecture, we will look at uh, some of the applications of uh, biodegradable polymers so that uh, the emphasis remains on uses and uh, we will look at these applications uh, by first looking at what are the key uh, ideas which drive uh, the development of uh, biodegradable polymers. So, general drive is towards developing biodegradable polymers which can be processed easily because we require these uh, polymeric parts in very large uh, volumes, uh, the processing speeds, the processing costs and so in general ease of processing has to be there. Uh, of course, they have to exhibit uh, properties which are uh, required for a given application and uh, uh, equally importantly, they has to be cost competitive. Uh, the feature of cost competitiveness is also sometimes addressed by policies given the overall emphasis on sustainability at a societal level and at uh, the larger governance structures which are there. Uh, quite often, cost competitiveness is ensured by providing certain incentives and subsidies to many of these uh, practices which may lead to overall sustainable practices. And so, generally the emphasis with the biodegradable polymers uh, we could say is on organic or bio recycling. So, recycling is still the norm, but uh, the recycling happens by integrating polymeric materials with the overall biogeochemical cycles and uh, the emphasis on mechanical and chemical recycling will be reduced therefore. And uh, general techniques which are used for uh, making objects out of biodegradable polymers essentially remain the same as what we have discussed earlier. So, extrusion of uh, polylactic acid or uh, film blowing using uh, polyhydroxybutyrate and uh, fiber spinning using polylactic acid. So, all of these are common uh, techniques which are utilized and in fact, uh, one of the key uh, issues associated with the biodegradable polymer is the use of these processing techniques. And uh, the advantage that polyethylene terephthalate or PE polyethylene gives in terms of their ease of processing sometimes cannot be matched by these polymers and lot of effort is also going on to understand the rheology of these polymers. Can we add few other things so that the rheology improves and then processability improves. So, generally lot of these challenges are being uh, addressed while we have now more and more use of these biodegradable polymers. If you look at the current numbers, uh, the overall use of uh, biodegradable polymers is very small. It is uh, less than 1 percent and in fact, 0.5 uh, percent and thereabouts uh, in terms of uh, what the overall amount of biodegradable polymers which are being used compared to the complete uh, polymeric material usage that we have. So, there is significant scope for moving towards more and more biodegradable polymers. So, let us look at uh, how the current uh, products made out of biodegradable polymer, what are they made of and what products are being made. So, if we look at starch based uh, materials for example, the key challenge here is uh, processing and also optimum performance. Quite often starch film may be brittle and so many of the film applications we want flexible transparent film. So, can that be as achieved using starch and can film be made at the same rate that currently many of uh, polyethylene or other polypropylene other packaging films that we make. But uh, many of these questions have been addressed uh, to a limited extent and therefore, we have seen that uh, starch based uh, shopping bags are there, there are a lot of uh, domestic utensils which are available in the market. Uh, agriculture which is where mulch films are used to try to manage the environment under which uh, the plant growth happens, uh, there also starch based materials are used. Even in fact, interior parts in uh, automotive sector. Uh, medicine use and also styrofoam instead of styrofoam can we use uh, starch based foam because styrofoam is a large again component of uh, plastic waste management issues that we face. And so, foam made out of starch is also a promising application which already is being done uh, to a limited extent. If we look at uh, polyhydroxybutyrate, uh, the key challenge uh, still remains the cost 
because uh, it is a microorganism produced uh, polymer, the rate at which and the amounts that can be produced still leads to the cost of PHP being very high. And the other thing of course, will be in terms of properties, can it be as transparent and as tough as the material that it is trying to replace. But uh, it is still being researched quite a lot. Uh, there are uh, uh, very few commercial exploitation of PHP, but lot of promise based on its availability as a microorganism based uh, polymeric material and its properties are also quite promising, but cost remains high. So, therefore, the potential applications could be in oxygen barrier films, in biomedical devices or blend it with other sets of polymers, so that we can arrive at effective packaging materials. So, let us uh, look at the other polymer, uh, which is uh, very commonly uh, used these days, uh, polylactic acid. Uh, and uh, this is again a polymer, which is uh, not uh, produced by microorganisms or animals, it is actually a bio based polymer. So, the uh, ingredients uh, and the monomers can come from uh, renewable sources, but it is a synthesized polymer. And uh, the key challenge of uh, making polylactic acid is to control the stereochemistry or the enantiomers which are present there. And these influence whether the material is amorphous or semi crystalline. And so, properties get significantly impacted based on the presence of what is the stereochemistry along the macromolecule. However, uh, the processing capability of polylactic acid also depends on the overall macromolecular conformations which are possible in uh, because of the stereochemistry. So, generally different additives are added to polylactic acid to improve the processability. But uh, this is being used to quite significant extent as a fiber form in uh, non woven materials. So, this is uh, P, uh, PLA fiber is uh, quite common in terms of making uh, different types of products, which are you can see all disposable products such as sanitary napkins, diapers and tissues. Uh, it has been also uh, used as uh, packaging materials, uh, food containers and bottles. And uh, again applications uh, where uh, we may not use it in the film or fiber form, but more as a product uh, which is uh, molded and uh, shaped. So, uh, whether it is electronic or automotive or biomedical, again the uh, application is keeping in mind the overall biodegradability aspect of polylactic acid. So, uh, the other class of uh, polymers which are common uh, are uh, polyesters and uh, as we have seen polyesters have a natural uh, tendency to get uh, attacked with uh, water present and then uh, give us carboxylic acid and alcohol. And so, examples of this is uh, polybutylene succinate or polybutylene adipate terephthalate. In fact, they form about uh, 20 percent of the overall biodegradable polymer production. So, they are quite significant, one fifth of biodegradable polymers which are out there in the world. Uh, and this is uh, uh, basically data which is a uh, few years old, but it gives us an idea that these two uh, polyesters are also quite important as far uh, part of the components of the overall biodegradable mix which is out there in the market. And you can see why uh, the properties are similar in uh, some respect to polyethylene polypropylene. Uh, the glass transition is minus 30 for PBS and uh, the melting temperature is uh, 115. Uh, basically, PBS is arrived by uh, again uh, doing a standard condensation reaction between a diol and a diacid, succinic acid with a butane diol, and we get basically the polyester formation because of water uh, coming in and out of the system. And uh, these are used uh, as uh, mulch uh, films and bags, and they also have a significant promise in terms of producing shapes which are thermoformed. So, these are not uh, flat shapes, but at the same time they are not extremely complicated shapes, which can be used as a stamping operation and thermoforming can be done. On the other hand, uh, uh, the uh, PBAT uh, is a copolyester. So, it in fact contains uh, aliphatic and aromatic part of polyester. So, you can recognize this uh, and uh, immediately figure out why PET for example, polyethylene terephthalate is non biodegradable even though it is polyester, 
because of the presence of the aromatic group along PET, the axis of water, the axis of enzymes, the possibility of cleavage reactions, the possibility of assimilation, all of that reduces. So, the presence of aromatic group generally will lead a polyester away from biodegradation. On the other hand, if you only have aliphatic polyester, then you get only limited set of properties. So, therefore, these copolyesters are an attempt to make a copolymer which has appropriate biodegradation properties as well as appropriate mechanical and thermal response for the applications. So, therefore, uh, their uh, strength and uh, strain at failure is similar to polyethylene. And uh, biodegradation of random copolymers is faster than block copolymers because when you have blocks of poly uh, aromatic uh, um, entities, what happens is access again to biodegradation is much less. But on the other hand, if you have uh, these aromatic groups uh, as random uh, monomers on the macromolecular chain, then uh, chain cleavage can happen wherever there are uh, aliphatic chains and smaller molecules then can be assimilated by microorganisms. And generally the uh, PBAT is used as uh, packaging applications. So, you can see that there are several uh, examples of uh, these uh, biodegradable polymers and one thing you might have noticed uh, in terms of the processing techniques that I discussed, in terms of molecular architecture that I discussed that these all belong to thermoplastic. So, we will close this lecture by pondering little bit on what about biodegradable thermosets and elastomers. Because we know that these two cross-linked systems also form a significant uh, usage of polymeric materials and uh, the stability which is given by thermosets or the flexibility and damping properties which are provided by elastomers, so they are very important for a variety of applications. So, is it possible uh, to think of biodegradable thermosets and elastomers and this still uh, largely remains a research topic. Uh, there are of course, degradable thermosets in which case we are not talking in terms of th biodegradation, but a thermoset which can be decrosslinked and this we have discussed earlier also. But however, can we have a, a thermoset and elastomer which is completely biodegradable. So, one uh, line of thought in this direction could be let us say synthesis of uh, these kind of uh, polymers such as epoxy or polyurethanes or unsaturated polyesters which are used in cross-linked polymeric systems. Can they be made out of uh, a renewable source and during this process can we make sure that we use reagents which are not as toxic and we lead to a set of properties which are as good as the synthetic epoxy or synthetic uh, polyester resins and uh, finally, can we ensure that they still remain biodegradable. So, many of the functional groups which are present in vegetable oil which make it a naturally biodegradable molecule, can they be retained in the final macromolecule so that chain cleavage, enzymatic access and biodegradation, bioassimilation are all possible. So, with this uh, thought uh, we will leave, many of these are still uh, questions to be addressed uh, by us scientists and engineers to make uh, polymeric materials more sustainable for their applications. So, we will stop the lecture here. Thank you.